So hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me back on the banks of the River Ribble and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be fishing the whip for silvers. So thank you to everybody that left such nice comments on the last video where I asked if you wanted me to come back on here and fish the whip for those silvers. So that is what we're going to be doing today. It's a brisk, cool morning. We're into December now. It's my favourite time of year, you know, for chub, days, pike. So yeah, let's take a look at the swim, the setup, and how we're going to approach it. This is the swim that we're going to fish today. Nice and comfortable. You see there the bait tray, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And that is the swim we're going to fish. Now arriving at first light, there's a few fish topping. And yeah, it's a cool, calm morning. They have given a bit of rain and a bit of wind later. So I'm going to waste no time in making a start. So in the last video I did mention about the GoPro playing up and I found out that one of the batteries is rubbish. So the problem we've got today is I have only literally got one of the batteries with me. So we'll do the best we can. Bait wise, we've got lots of white maggot and plenty of Hinder's hemp. And you see they're nicely split and we've got some more reserves behind us as well because we are really going to attack the swim today. So looking at the swim, you're on eye level with me, so I'm going to be fishing. I'm going to be fishing the maggot right in front of me, round about here. It's only about three foot deep, the swim. I'm going to be putting me hemp here, and it's this dark water here that I'm going to run over with the, the whip. Nice little markers there. We're going to put the maggots in line with us so the fish don't come upstream too much because we're fishing a heavy bottle setup, so we're going to be edging that bait through. And we're going to feed really heavy with hemp just to try and do our best to keep any quality fish below us so the float's settled by the time we go over it it's a beautiful morning for dotting that float right down and hopefully getting a few bites whip that i'm using is my eight meter response whip from preston innovations it's a piece of kit that i invested in last year the float that i've gone with is a three gram Dave Howell Bolo. I've got that down to a bulk shot with an Olivet and a strung out um, number fours just to prevent tangles, you know, so it's a nice little boom effect. Then I've got a short hook link down to two droppers, which are number sixes and a size 18 hook. So before we start going through, I'm just going to feed some of that hemp quite heavy because once you get going with the whip, it's a bit in and out. So my plan is to feed really heavy with the hemp every couple of casts and just maggot every time through. But to begin with, I'm just trying to get a bit of bait down. With the whip, you've only got so far you can go down, so you've really got to attract them fish into your area. And so you want the float going through probably about half the speed of the river. That is the beauty of the whip, you can really just edge that bait through. And the hope today is some of those quality roach that do live in the river. There we go, that's how we want it to work. <laughs> that is a roach, it's a target species. There we go, there's another. And that time I was feeding by hand, so if we can feed them maggots by hand, and that's really going to help us because obviously picking the catapult up just kind of slows you down a bit and it is just now about getting into that routine of feeding and just trying to keep them fish in the area where you want to catch them there we go an excellent start to the session you know just to be getting bites is the key at the start Again, being really positive with that hemp to begin with, just to get a bed down, because you've got to hold them in the area. You know, you've got to keep them there, basically. And you can only do that with bait. There's another one. Certainly an excellent start to the session, most definitely. A nice big, you know, pouch of that hemp. And flick out. And then feeding them maggots, making sure that they're going in front of me. And all that bait is just going down with that column. 
of bait as you just edge it through it's going through your bait a lot slower than the actual free offerings but that is exactly how them roach want it there you go you can see there just that how long it took to go through the swim then is a lot slower than the speed that them maggots are going through and it really has been an excellent start to the session you know we've had a couple of the target species and yeah roach was the target today and you know hopefully we can get some of the real quality ones in here and have a bit of a tussle on that whip but it starts to the session go hopefully that little bit at the start was just shown how you know you can feed to get the fish where you want them and then target the species in different ways and slowing that bait right down is definitely the way for the roach So it's certainly been an excellent start to the session plenty of bites already and yeah it's good when you come with a plan and it works sometimes it takes a while to get them in the swim but the river ribble is a special river but sometimes on it you do get them gaps in the day and the most important thing and a nice bend in the whip is not to be too despondent if you stop getting bites just keep feeding Keep changing a few things where you're feeding on the line, you're going down a bit. And eventually them fish will come back in. And like I said then, just keep with it and the bites hopefully come back. So just into a better fish most definitely. Mr Pike's been down the edge, so this guy might be in trouble. He's just on the limit I think of not lifting out, so we'll net him. Just to be on the safe side, got a healthy bend in the whip. And what a lovely fish that is on the whip. A lovely bend in it, and yeah, great fun. The next trot through, we're into another nice fish. And like I've said before with rivers, that's why I love them, because at any moment it can just change. You've just got to keep on putting that bait in to let that opportunity arise when they do come that there's bait there and bait to attract them. Well, so what a lovely day that is. And on rod and line they're a great battle as they jag in the flow. But on the whip with only so much line it's a different battle altogether. That whip bends round and it cushions the fight almost. They are good for getting the better fish in but you do have their limits that's a lovely days we have had a pike active in the area today so every time you do get a slightly better one you do think if the pike's gonna come up and relieve you of the fish but looks like another quality roach and at the start of the session these were the fish that we wanted to catch those lovely roach that live in the river ribble and sometimes on the whip you hook into things that you're probably not going to get in. I would say this is either a pike or a chub. It's certainly a big fish. It's heading upstream and yeah, sometimes there's just some fish that you just don't get in. Almost certainly I think going to be a pike but let's see what we can do. But it's powerful. The fish has just come up and it is a pike. <laughs> And there was one about in the swim. I say chances of getting him in <laughs> minimal because we've got to try and get him into a landing net if we get him into the edge. Keeping quality fish in the swim has been hard. But it all kind of makes sense now with that bend in the whip and a pike. 
you can see them there just beneath the surface sadly missed the pike we were trying to get him into the edge it was always going to be the hard part getting him into the net and the hook pulled he was actually hooked in the mouth but it gave us a load of answers today i just knew there was something wrong when we started off with them quality fish and he just wouldn't stay in the swim i had a feeling mr pike was about but yeah as soon as he's gone that is the quality that we could have been catching today i'm almost certain of it and we'll have to come back with the whip again, won't we? But that's a lovely day. And what a difference a pike can make. It's like a completely different swim. Beautiful roach just coming now towards the end of the session. While Mr Pike's away, the roach are playing. It's absolutely night and day. Yeah, <laughs> just the impact that them pike have. It wasn't a big pike either. He was only maybe six, seven pound maybe. But it's just the impact that they have. These bigger fish just won't settle. And that is just the impact that them pike have. These bigger fish, they just won't settle with one about. But at the end of the session, hopefully, it's beginning to show the damage you can do. With a whip, it's not just small fish. Them small fish we've had today could quite easily have been these, one after another. And that's what's happening now towards the end of the session. The session does come to an end there now, and as you can see on screen, we've had plenty of bites in that final net. So all in all, I was made up with that final net. It was actually better than I expected, and the session did show sometimes that the whip can be quite limited, both in the area that you can fish, and what you can do if something like that does happen when a pike turns up. All in all though, I really did enjoy the session and getting out on that whip, and it'll be definitely a piece of kit that you see in future videos. So all that remains now is to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. If you're out fishing over the Christmas period, the tight sister lines, Merry Christmas, and I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines.